Hey everybody, welcome back to Mission Accomplished Media. I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to finish up our review of Season 2 of Altered Carbon from Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing Episodes 5, 6, 7, and 8, and then like a roundabout thing for the yes. whole season. Re recap, review, I guess. Yeah, uh, this it, it lags. I mean, that's what we can say, is it lags in the middle. And it, it picks up in the, I think, I like, I enjoyed the penultimate episode of, mm -hmm. of Episode 7, and I... And also enjoyed episode eight, yeah. and it's because it's the most cyberpunk stuff going on. Right, the concepts are at least highbrow, even if the execution uh, or production value yeah. rather uh, doesn't necessarily pull it off. So the one of the things I noticed right away is it seems like it seems like at least like they still have that issue where they're reusing the same sets, mm -hmm. but I've noticed that they added a little depth in their shots and I, I really think that helps yeah uh, a lot of the shots in, in like three and four were very like close but the background was still out of focus mm -hmm. and so it was just it was just awkward I felt really like packed in um, and there's some of that in episode um, five but it's not as it's not as much as what you just came from where they're like when they go into the you know in the cave system everything feels really close and yeah that, it's a cave system but then you know, the way they shoot it makes it feel... Uh, Claustrophobic? Like, disorienting a little bit. Well, well yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't... It's a small set. It was a small it's set. It was a very small set. So yeah. You could tell because it was like yeah. every time... Every, everybody's so close. And they come around corners and stuff yeah, rather yeah. than like see a long kind of a... You know, but then again, you're underground, whatever. Again, this is a sense. hard... The one thing about the show, it's just really tough to talk about without spoiling it. At yeah. All. I mean, just uh, talk about yeah. like general feelings about it. Like, yeah. You know, well, I mean, if you guys are watching now, yeah, you've probably watched, watched. you probably watched the last two episodes, so yeah. I mean, we'll just say spoilers right across Threw there. Out. Yeah, yeah, spoilers. Um, and uh, hmm. so because episode one and two are one director, three, four are another. Yeah, five, six, mm -hmm. and then seven and eight. Uh, I'm going to say that episodes three and four and five and six were just not well done no I, so that's I, half the season that's just like mm. it's the middle <laughs> you know it's like and like the one director they were like ah we're not going to give you too much of a budget yeah, you because can... literally two it like two and a half episodes yeah. almost three full episodes are in a forest and it's like okay there's no budget there it's one of the things that was distracting for me is that you're you're talking about sci-fi or, or cyberpunk and it's a very organic sets. Yeah. There's, there's like, it's odd. It just comes off as odd. It's, uh, and it doesn't really look that futuristic when you are in the settings that should look futuristic, like yeah. the offices and the people don't even really look that futuristic. Mm -hmm. And it just clashes. It does. A little bit, you know. Um, yeah, it's just like every... I definitely think that seven, halfway through seven, starts to pick up, mm -hmm. and then eight is is a is a good episode. Yeah, it's a good. I um, thought it was a good ending, especially the way that it ends. Yeah, because yeah. they could kind of. Yeah, it, it resolves it, but it leaves yeah. it open enough where they could be like season three coming or soon, continue it in a comic book, or continue it in a yeah. like something else, some other medium that's not as expensive as a TV show. Right. Yeah. Um, what I do want to say is. To go back to where you're saying, like, production, production, production. Specifically what I'm talking about when, I'm, when we're talking about production is, I guess, world building. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple, uh, there's something that happens with Trep and her dad. Mm -hmm. And some blah, 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 which I'm not trying to spoil, but, I mean, that is a spoil in and of itself. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, he is, like, a fixer. He, like, fixes yeah. people's implants and yep. stuff like that. And, like... He's a mechanic. Yeah, and so... On the table is like this prosthetic arm yeah, it was kind of that's nice. really cool looking. Yep. There's like a, and another scene that takes place in the same room. There's a leg that looks awesome. Right. Where is this stuff in the real world in this shit? We don't see any of it. Yeah. We see the highest high tech people where you can't tell. Yeah. Come on, I want I want a dude to be like, hey, I just got home from work. <laughs> And take off his work <laughs> arm and put on his home arm right, yeah, yeah. and be like, all right, it's like cooking dinner. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Like, like uh, yeah, the, the, 
It was just set dressing. Again, yeah, they, that's they what I'm saying. The world yeah. building doesn't pay off. Right. They, they, there's no world building. You might as well not even pay attention to what's going on in the background because it's just like generic. Like the market scene, I feel like they're trying to make it look like Blade Runner. Okay. You know what I mean? There's like a there's Blade a little, Runner feeling. Yeah, there's a little it. bit of neon, not yeah. much, and then. Right. I, and it Grungy. just doesn't pull it off. It doesn't. Right. They're trying to like show like layers, but it's not. It's just mm -hmm. like undergroundish. They just don't. There's no um, sense to this city that there's, they're in. You know it's what I mean? Shallow. Everything's shallow. Yeah. It, yeah. The, you don't. I think what part of it is is the the point of view of where the story is told is very narrow. Yeah. So you're really like you don't get any expanded knowledge of this world. You just know it's Harlan's world and the rich are rich and the poor are poor. You know, it's like, yeah, you know. Not everybody can afford to buy new sleeves. Yeah. Like at the very end, Trep says something, well, along the, uh, towards the end, Trep says something to her son and she's like, I just paid off that sleeve. Don't mm -hmm. you break it. <laughs> well, which, kind of a funny throw. Which literally, which literally, yeah, literally says like, don't go, don't go killing yourself by yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but overall, I just I don't get the feeling of a future setting when I'm watching this. No. It, it just they hand wave it with like some establishing shots and shit, but mm -hmm. you don't really get into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, do, do you do you want to give it a rate? Like, do you want to get um, give uh, five and six a rating and then seven and eight a rating? Do you feel like doing that right now, and then we can get into the uh, to the like the, the mean, goodness of yeah five the and conversation five and six are meh. They're a, they're a mission. No, failed. I go failed. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was so like, meh. Because I had watched earlier in the, yeah. like, when we, you know, I had watched the whole thing before, we, you know, we, we'd done whatever. And, I, you know, on second watch, I'm even, I'm like, no. Yeah. I don't even, I don't, ugh. Uh, you know what? Skip the, skip the forest, do it somewhere else, make some, make, change it. Change it it's it. funny because this is a short season. And there's just a lot of it that feels like it's unnecessary. It is. They could do it, it some other way. Or they're just spinning around waiting for certain plot points to line up so everything finishes where they need it to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just... I'm glad we're done watching it. Yeah. Because even though seven, <laughs> even though seven and eight do get better, five and six were bad. To the point, if I was watching this, like, weekly, I think if I watched four, five, and six in a row, I just feel like I'm done. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of, um, like, when they're in the forest, those two episodes, or two and a half episodes, almost three. It reminded me of, uh, what is it, that that show, like, The Hundred? Okay. When it, like, first started. I didn't really first, watch like, it. Down to the, yeah. Just the quality of it. Okay. Just the quality, because it's a young adult kind mm -hmm. of a thing. It's a CW show. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I tried, like, I did. I actually did watch that, but specifically because, like, at a certain point, the production value goes like, Pew. yeah, and because uh, I guess the show does well, and like everybody's like a uh, like a barbarian. That's yeah, cool. yeah. The world building's good. It's my point. Like shows like that, I mean, even on CW, it was like I'm watching this because the world is cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily care about half these characters. Right. But I want to experience what, right. you know, what happens in this. And it does, this, these five and six de definitively do not make me want to experience this world. Now we go into mm -hmm. seven and eight, and in seven and eight, again, spoilers. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is a concept here, a bunch of different concepts I'm going to go through real quick. I'm just going to list them, mm -hmm. and I guess we can, we can talk about it real quick. At one point, they are making a virtual construct. Yeah, they the do. Dig mm -hmm. is making a virtual construct. Right. To then upload Kel, Kel. and the Elder that's hijacked or parasit parasiting yeah. or like whatever, yeah. eating off of her stack. And then they're going to trap the el that yeah, Elder. Yeah, they got to separate them because they're so intertwined. Mm -hmm. So they have to basically go into the stack and manipulate this creature into basically consolidating itself yeah right yeah so so and then they can initiate a firewall and remove only Kel mm -hmm. and leave the and spin her back up right yeah. so eventually uh, earlier Takashi Prime who's the <laughs> older this doesn't get confusing. younger younger Takashi he's younger yeah yeah who hasn't who who hasn't known that his sister is dead yet right so it's like bef this uh, when he's still 
this manageable. This version comes Jaeger. from before season one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so, so it's been it's over over thirty years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't even think this version. Uh, I don't think Takeshi Prime, uh, who is played by, <laughs> let me just want to say his name right. I don't. Will Yun Lee. Okay, Will Yun Lee. Who? Yeah, Kovacs Prime. Yeah. So he plays Kovacs Prime, and he doesn't know that he doesn't even know his sister's been been sold off to the Yakuza yet. Right. As well, he, he he's the most malleable that mm -hmm. Jaeger has had, but still trained. Yeah. So he's trained. Seems like relatively fresh mm -hmm. off the training because he mentions it like two or three times in that first yeah the first Your introduction. Best train, blah blah blah. You know this is SeaTac training mm -hmm. or like whatever. It's just um, so he messes with Dig like I was right. saying and um, forces her to give him information. Yeah, well, uh, he Kovacs Takeshi Kovac Anthony Mackie. <laughs> there we go. Right? Yeah. Anthony Mackey deleted the majority of the files, but he didn't delete the metadata. And so, like, metadata is like when you take a picture, if you upload it to um, your computer, you can download another program that'll tell you the metadata. Yeah. Like the XFL yeah. file, I think it is, or whatever. Or X something. I don't know, whatever. It's XFL. <laughs> Sorry, that just came. F. But anyway, so they get them, they get them through the metadata, and at the same time, uh, Will, Yun Lee, uh, uploads like one small tiny file that like will help him track her wherever mm -hmm. she goes or whatever she's doing. So that's what that that's that comes into play when she's making the construct. They find the signal of her, or they find her signal going out, and then they find that she's making a construct, and they're going to go into the construct and then try to back trace the signal. Yeah, they're, they're cool. They're trying to locate them, and the way cool they do it is sci-fi cyberpunky. Mm -hmm. isn't, it's a cool idea. It's executed well. Yes. The construct looks cool. Well, the um, con but the construct is again the same exact set yeah. as when like uh, it's, it's a bunch. It's a bunch and a bunch of scenes actually. Yeah. And all they did was like move that like cryo sarcophagus out. <laughs> yeah, the the cave and with the tree and the roots. Yeah, and they you lit know. it different. Um, so and then uh, there is the concept of the other uh, sci-fi concept of or cyberpunk concept of Spoilers again <laughs> of Kovacs Prime will watching Anthony Mackey uh, sacrifice himself willingly. Yeah. So they're the same person. Right. They go. They both have the same information now, uh, but this Kovacs or Kovacs Prime hasn't like necessarily given himself completely over to yeah. Kelcrest Falconer yet. No, he's he's he he seems to be a bit smitten. You know what I mean? Like he's by the end. He's yeah. he's uh, at least you know um, sees something in her that is beyond just you know what he knows of the rebellion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And and then you know in the background the whole time is Danica Harlan uh, pulling the string. She initiates a coup and and takes control of the Galactic Senate. Or no, mm -hmm. I don't. You know, yeah. But, <laughs> She has a uh, power, unlimited power. Yeah. Um, so now she's in charge of Jaeger, where at one point Jaeger was kind of uh, able to operate on his own terms. Mm -hmm. So there's a kind of a neat little coup scene where Danica basically takes over. It's a board of directors meeting in an office. Yeah. But, you know, she takes over and then puts the rest of them into protective services. Basically, put, she puts them in the jail. Um, Jaeger comes in and is like, don't do this. And they do it anyway, and then she's like, you know, banishes them and, and is like, you're under my control now. You, I need mm -hmm. you to go do this and only this. And that mission is to find Kovacs and Kel. Uh, he's allowed to kill Kovacs, but he wants, but she wants Kel brought back. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. Because she can control, it's found the, out that she can control Angel the Fire. The Angel Fire. And which man, is because of the Elder. Well, that happened. That's in the hijacked with her or whatever. That happened in episode five, right? The uh, fire raining down I think in the woods. It, uh, five or six, something like that. Anyway, I think it was end of five going into six. There was no build up for her being able to control this angel fire stuff. No, right? And, and it just comes across as a huge Deus Ex Machina. Like, in that episode, yeah. In that episode, there's mm -hmm. no explanation for it. She's having like what seems to be like really bad migraines. 
You yeah. know? Another then, example would be um, when uh, the elder. I just want to throw this out there real quick. So uh, going back to the main, main con the concept I was talking about earlier with the with the construct, elder ends up because because Jaeger and right. Kovacs, elder ends up uh, going and taking over um, yeah, Jaeger's body. Sleeve, yeah. And then at one point he goes back to the soul trader and he breaks in and like finds like this column. <laughs> <laughs> and just pulls it out, and it's yeah. like it was not ever established in the story or even shown. Like they could have had the soul, soul trader like walk out and, and like hang, and, like put it down, like something. You know there, what I mean? Something. You know, there is no mention of this. Not I mean, at all. Yeah, it's just another like it, it's an unknown MacGuffin. Yeah, yeah, it's like he needed this thing to be able to complete the quest, mm -hmm. but you had no idea that he needed it. But again, it's like yeah. you were saying, just pass it back to you. Yeah. Um, like you were that it's there's no precedent for <laughs> yeah, what happened. It's right. just like, oh, okay. Yeah. I like a little foreshadowing. Like I, there's doesn't... something like that important where it, it, it's critical to the plot. Because mm -hmm. if he, if if Jaeger doesn't have that in hand, he can't take control of the Angel Fire Network, whatever mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah. And exact his revenge. Another another thing what, uh, that they, that they, that they kind of set a precedent for, and then kind of drop it immediately. <laughs> so the reason that Kelcrest can have the elder in her stack with yeah. her is because she created the stacks mm -hmm. way 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 back when, and so she always pushed the limits of the human mind. Yeah, and it's just a throwaway line that he yeah. says that uh, it's not said ever. Again. If anybody can do it, it's her. Yeah. Okay. Talks her up. Basically. Yep. But every other person who comes in contact with this thing during that one during the one callback when we finally kind of wrap up what happened to Trep's brother, mm -hmm. thank God. Um, but I mean, you know, here's what I will say. The story does kind of go like this kind of nicely. Yeah, they weave it I, together. I don't mind the well. story in the end. It's just like... It's just the way they went about it. I'm just like... Pfft. I feel like, again, they just really haven't done anything to get you to connect with these characters. Like... Yeah. And then they're just throw like they throw copies of characters out there. Mm -hmm. The characters obviously well, I don't oh. know if it's rightfully so, but they don't act the same. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't even act the same as like Joel Kinnaman's uh, representation of mm -hmm. uh, Takashi. Yeah, uh, it, it's just you know, and, and then like things, things just seem to happen very specific for very specific reasons. Like there doesn't seem to be. And going back to the specific reasons thing, so they set it up that that Kelcrest is like the only one who can do this. Yeah. So then why the hell can Jaeger do it later? Like why why is Jaeger's I mean, I know it's he's deterior you can yeah. see that it's kind of deteriorating him, mm -hmm. but every single other person in that in that flashback scene, the thing jumps yeah. all into them and then they're like, bah! Yeah. And then, you know, and immediately they're just like, mm -hmm. I'm done. And then it jumps into her and she wakes up, right? But Still, like it. Why can that happen with Jaeger? Is it because uh, he's a special advanced blah 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 soldier? I, I mm, they don't really explain that. That no. doesn't go explained. Why didn't the firewall work? Because Jaeger was there. Because you thought, like I was thinking that Jaeger was just going to be trapped inside the firewall too. Like how is he? Like is he inside the construct but not inside the firewall? Like, <coughs> it was just like it was just kind of went so quick there. That I wasn't sure if, like, the firewall encompassed the construct or if the construct, like, if this firewall was inside the construct. You know what I mean? I didn't quite understand. understand the, the I didn't yeah, quite the, understand how um, the Elder goes from uh, Qualcrest Falconer to Jaeger. Like, there's no explanation. All of a sudden, Jaeger's awake and now he's, you know, uh, the sleeve is being operated by the Elder. Well, because they disconnect, and it's like, you wonder if he made the same kind of deal, right, with they the Elder. They don't talk about it. They don't, know, but, like, yeah. They and don't show anything. During the climax, Anthony Mackie's like, Jaeger! Jaeger! And he's like, huh? What? Oh, punch, punch. Yeah. I made you a charm! Like, all right, dude. We, we get it. We get it. You're like a, I don't know, you're like a mad dad. Yeah. He's Ugh. like, it's a jackbooted thug part you know he's just a bully you I know, know it's just like uh and then like you know <laughs> man this is just like every time like 
unfortunately, episode seven and episode eight aren't enough to redeem this show. They just no, aren't. No, like, really. it, you just slog through that middle four episodes. Because, and it's all like, <laughs> you know, it's just... The whole, I guess the whole point of that is to, like, realize that there is a, oh, we, we kind of forgot about the whole fake war thing. Oh, but yeah, that was... But then again, this is trope that's been done so much. I mean, we can just she's pull playing, it out of the air. She's it's Phantom Menace like, Star Wars shit. Yeah. It's also it's also probably real life Illuminati shit. Like <laughs> I don't even think it's Illuminati <laughs> stuff. I think it's just war profiteering. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. selling to both sides, and then uh, even better when you create the conflict yourself, and then yeah. you know back both sides behind. You know, you're just playing both sides, and it is a familiar trope. And you know, Danica, to you by Halliburton. <laughs> Danica, <laughs> Danica. Um, uh, now my I wanna, FBI guy. Now I want to call her Danica Halliburton. Uh, Danica Harlan <laughs> is, is just like, um, you know, power hungry, but she gets her come up and relatively easily mm -hmm. and with oh. very little consequence. Kind of twice she gets her come up and, yeah. right? Because if they wrap up the trap. Okay, oh, oh, that's what I forgot. While they're doing the constructs, yeah. mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trap is like, I'm gonna borrow, <laughs> I'm gonna borrow Anthony Mackie, yeah. and I'm gonna hop into him, and I'm gonna go kick ass because they kidnapped my wife and my son, and my son because yeah. she's an archaeologue, archaeologue or whatever, yeah. and um, it was just kind of funny. And then she goes, and there's like a little, like a kind of a mini climax to that storyline. And uh, she, you she know, she kicks her, ass and Anthony Mackie. Yeah, the kid knows immediately. Yeah. Uh, but then again, like they, oh, they do like stack shoot Danica, so they have to respin her up with the DHF. Yeah. So, was, so like I said, those combination of things happening at the same time, and then Poe jumping around to different places that he's been mm -hmm. that have, you know, you know, they have nano swarms that he can just like mm -hmm. like go into. Uh, that was I was like, these are the highbrow cyberpunk. Yeah, that was cool. Concepts I want to Especially do. Especially since every time you popped up it was a little awkward. Like yeah. you're there in the middle oh, of a yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. Like in the middle of a standoff. So that was kind of a little you know. uh, the, yeah when he pops up in the firefight between uh between uh <laughs> get your ass trap and trap and will and to catch yeah. your Kovacs Prime and like some of the protectorate guys or whatever they are, security force at one point, there's this like Takeshi or Take like Kovacs Prime is like heads like up there, and he's like here, and he's like his head's well above the cover. <laughs> yeah, like it's and like, in the background, you can see one of the bad guys like come out of cover for a good like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, <laughs> boom, 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 misses every time. And there's like there's not even like chick, 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 in the front. Mm. There's just like a real crappy After Effects like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right? And, and the gunslinger. Uh, and I'm just like, they're literally 10 feet away from each other. Yeah, if that. How did he miss? And I just, I don't know. That, it's pretty close range. Uh, yeah. That's a nitpick. That specifically is me nitpicking. <laughs> just, like at this point, yeah, this cut a little bit more, you know, fat off that bone. But it's I, not, I like 7 and 8. I give 7 and 8 a mission accomplished. Right. That is. It's so hard to do that because, like, you can't. The buildup is is non-existent. You know, like a lot of stuff that's like know, not. Yeah. Like I, I think I said it in our last review. Like, I feel like you could just cut up this and have like a decent long movie. You know, where it's just like if you compress some of this stuff and got rid of like some of the forest stuff where nothing really happens, and just move the the story forward to the faster to the conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it. It just drags, and while I do think seven and eight are well written, well executed, besides like a few little nitpicks here and there, like I don't, I don't care at this point, you know. And to me, it's like a mission met. Okay. Because it, it's just like I want it to be over. So the whole, you know? so whole season for you is mission met at this point. <sighs> Actually, I think the whole season is mission fail. Really? For you? It, it's a failure. Okay. It, there, there's no way this stands up to what we thought the name Altered Carbon stood up for. I mean, yeah. season one wasn't necessarily, like, the best television ever. Yeah. I just, but it was awesome for what it was. Yeah. Like, a little bit of bumps here perfect. and there, but overall, it's a mission accomplished for season one. Yeah. But season two, I'm going to have to say, overall, mission man. No, I don't no. think it failed. I think it's like, 
if we're gonna give it a number, it's like a 70-ish. Maybe. Slow, like high 60s. Like a D. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, like if we're gonna go to like school with it and give it like a grade. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying mission failed for the whole season. I'm saying mission math for the whole season. Yeah. I can't justify episodes one and two being okay. Mm -hmm. Four, or, sorry, three, four, five, and six just being kind of a slog. Yeah, it's... And then 7 and 8 being like, yay, highbrow concepts of cyberpunk yeah. happening in these episodes. Right. And I liked it, um, 7 and 8. So I, I will say that. Uh, they mm -hmm. were a mission accomplished for me both. And um, So do you think uh, overall, those... Though, is it those two episodes that like... Oh, it's four episodes. 1, 2, and 7 and 8. Yeah. The whole middle of the season, though... And the two episodes in the forest where I'm just like, okay, million dollar budget, yeah. half it went to Mackie. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's what it seems like to me. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not a million dollar budget. Probably like, I don't think it's $10 million an episode, do you? Mm -hmm. This ain't no $100 million no, there's TV no, show. No, there's 80. Yeah. I mean, it could be 80 million, but I don't you think... You think so? What's well, Game of Thrones? Do you think that, like, here's my thing. Do you think they looked at the Netflix, like, watch algorithm and planned this show? You know, like, because, like, I believe Netflix knows that the middle episodes dip in views. Really? You know? And I wonder if they look at this algorithm and they say, okay, we need a good episode one, an okay episode two, and then we need some filler, and then seven and eight need to be, you know, the, um... Yeah. The, you know, the conflict. It's like, one, you know, like, are they looking at that bell curve and being like, okay, well, we know where we can, uh you know, not put as much work into. And, and, and it's, it comes out. Yeah. I mean, there's like blatant lighting issues where it's like they either, the, the director either didn't know what the hell he was doing or they, they just didn't have the budget for the stuff that they needed to make it the way that it should have been. It uh, loses that, it loses the, the essence of noir, oh, I saw. Yeah. And it's oh, like all very evenly lit. And, and like, there's no, there's no like deep shadows. Like even in, you're in this cave system, oh. and there's beams, shafts of columns of not, light, uh, light coming out. Yeah. But then it's like miraculously dis diffused through yeah. every. It's like space. you're standing next to an open window, but yeah. you're like you're like 30, 40 feet, 50, 60 feet. Right. And there's like a cliff, in the, like yeah. you know, into like, the cave. <laughs> and and it, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, I thought they were inside. Yeah. And like it just seems like, seems like studio lighting. It's just a little too perfect, and it's, yeah. like... But, but I, during step 7 and 8, you made the comment that you're like, I like this lighting, because right. it was so much better. It was just so much better. Well, it had that it had that trope that you see in noir stuff, where they're, the light's coming through something that breaks it up. Like, you know, and this was like a honeycomb design, so you had lines across faces, lines across scenery. Uh, that's, that scene specifically, that room had, like, you know... Uh, foreground, midground, and background. So it include, and that's the thing. One of the things that threw me off during the middle is that there was no, it was foreground, background, and it was very compressed. Oh yeah, there's no like midground. Just time out for one mm -hmm. second. So you, uh, you always forget the good points that you make when we're watching these goddamn shows. Yeah. So I'm gonna make them. I'm not trying to steal the point. <laughs> I, I I'm trying everything. to give them credit, just so everybody out there knows. Yeah. So there was one point when I think it's Trep is talking to somebody on the shore and or whatever, one of them. One, they're talking to someone <laughs> on the shore in the forest. Yeah. And there's forest behind them. And just the green, the way the green was done and the way the depth was done, yeah. you're like, that looks like a flat matte painting. Or like, yeah. Well, or you're like, oh, let's look at that. You're like, that looks like shit. And I was yeah. I just paused it for a moment and we looked at it. And it does. It looks, yeah. looks like a it looks like a kaleidoscope. But yeah, they just went and like threw some like yellow and green paint at something, <laughs> it's like, and you know it's real. You know that there's it's, like a forest like there. Somebody was trying to follow along with Bob Ross. Yeah, and just give us, <laughs> yeah, just give us a little bit more detail in the yeah. background. Yeah, a little bit more focus. You know, like and, you, and, it, and the thing uh, is, is, they were on location at this lake with. But this is, this is what it, like, pisses me off. I'm getting angry now too because <laughs> what pisses me off is that when they do finally tone in the dial so that you can see what's in the background yeah. you can see the world around you nothing pays off like those prosthetics mm -hmm. we were talking about yeah it wasn't just hands it was it was like or arms it was like full-blown arms it was full-blown legs from yeah. the hip down from the knee down just feet just hands 
fingers, eyeballs, like ears, jaw. I saw jaws even, in the even background. Later in the resolution. Like top of heads and shit. In the resolution, you see later, you see uh, Trap like fixing somebody. Like, yeah. And all it is is like a, a shot of her using a, a, like a laser pointer yeah. on like a little piece of metal. And it's like on, doot, 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 yeah. right here. And she's like, oh, you fixed the damage. Yeah. And it was, it's, oh, I it's, can't even tell. It's and it was this like, little throwaway. tiny practical effect <laughs> that probably costs like. 50 bucks, mm. and let's say an hour and a half to two hours to do a really good job putting it on because they did close up on it, yeah. and it was really well done. You couldn't tell Unless they CGI'd it, but uh, it looked practical to me. I think it was practical. Uh, I do think that was that's practical. That's what I wanted, more right. of that. Yeah. More they, of that, like, more of that William Gibson stuff, where you pl you literally plug in because you mm. sock it in the back of your neck. Like, stuff like that. Because that's what that was. It was like, she's like, you know, she can yeah. learn anything, mm -hmm. like The Matrix. Which is also cyberpunk. People seem to forget mm -hmm. that the, like the Matrix is like the Matrix. It's like, but no, it's really cyberpunk. Right. So being able to plug something directly into your brain, or at least some sort of contraption that you've got implanted in you, you know, you can learn kung fu immediately. You can mm -hmm. learn Anthony Mackie's well, whatever yeah. martial arts and or training <laughs> it was. I don't know how to do it. So. What you just did there reminded me of the uh, uh, Kovacs versus Kovacs, Kovacs. Prime. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it was just, that's all, they, they, they yeah, like this like, like seven times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you better than you know yourself. It was, <laughs> it was like, okay, dude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to interrupt you, but if you're about to say it like so. No, it, it, just, it, it just wasn't cracked it was, out. It, it just wasn't good. It just wasn't. And what was that, episode six? I think. I think it was episode? five. I think it's five where Takeshi is revealed or the end of four or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Kovacs Prime. I keep Will yeah. Lee Yun. Um, I would no. It was Will Yun Lee. I'm yeah, sorry. Will Yun Lee. Erg. 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 Is that our new grading system? <laughs> Erg. <laughs> I uh, just... That was been loud and annoying. My apologies, but <laughs> some of that, some of, it does this show and and uh, 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 ah, three, four, five, and six and seven. No. Six. Sorry, I'm stopping there. Six. Make me go erg. Yeah. They make me angry. They make me like no more construct stuff. Maybe this construct thing for Kel. Here's the honest to god thing. They should have had her. They should have really had Kel just lay down the whole season and be and the AIs yeah. doing this thing. Right. And like Kovac should end up having to go back and go back in with new information that he's learned in the real world. Yeah. To be able to defeat this elder, at, you know what I mean, and then once they do the, that, I mean that's what it comes down to. Like you didn't have enough exposure to this concept of the elders at all, like of what they actually are. And uh, like yeah, it's kind of like the like, basis it, for the at, world, at a, at a right? Point they, ex a, they expose what it is. Is that um, Harlan? Uh, I forget his first name, but the original Harlan, the yeah. founder of this world, stumbles onto their like nest. And, you know, it's like some science, it looks like military science co-op expedition onto an unknown world, right? And so, um, Harlan decides to slaughter them all. Mm -hmm. But then, pretty much everything that this society has is built on technology that came from these elders. Mm -hmm. You know, including stack technology, right? Um, and they knew what they were, that's the thing. They already had the technology, the stack technology. Mm -hmm. So they literally came in contact with what they know are elders already. Right. And they were like, I didn't travel half my life to get on the ship and go back because we <laughs> right. found the elders. Yeah. And, the, you know, they want to do whatever. So they, they do. They, they wipe them out. Yeah. They and, slaughter them. Yeah. And that's why, you know, the, the, that's why this elder is all pissed off. Yeah. Because for whatever reason, the Angel Fire Network yeah. uploaded a single consciousness. Yep. Yeah. Or is it the tree thingy that uploaded it. The, it doesn't maybe really the matter. tree thingy uploaded it to here's yeah. the thing, it's all hand waved away yeah. with with like yeah. it's like a space magic thing. It's like That's we don't right. understand how their technology works. Okay okay. Alright. Okay. <laughs> we don't understand how their technology worked, but we can use the stacks. Yeah, yeah. They figured because that of Hellcrest. Yeah she, right. but she figured that out. But oh. she's beyond human. <laughs> or she <laughs> it's just uh, oh, God. Uh, can we talk about Eddie Vedder for a little bit? Oh, yeah, the Kemp, the unkempt guy? <laughs> yeah. What was his name? Something Kemp? Yeah. Uh, like this 
resistance. It seems like a resistance force comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, Let's see if he's in here real quick. Uh, Matt Ellis, Joshua Kemp. That's what yeah. his name was, Joshua Kemp. So Joshua Kemp is like the leader of this like rebel force or like unknown force. You don't really know where they come from. But they save him randomly again, come out of nowhere. Uh, he's oh, that's nice. That's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. That's how they wrap up the brother thing because of the yeah. necklace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spoilers. Did I, did I cut off your thought? Yeah. I was supporting you, though. <laughs> Damn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. I'm uh, trying to not do the... No, I have... I have the, that's like, why I sit here like this. I have the worst working memory ever. Oh, like I, I just, right. like... The train just falls off the track constantly. Oh, just like, it's just, yeah, like, just a penny on it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. It's like uh, that little toy train in Ant-Man. I love that scene, actually. That's great. That's great. I, I don't... It was just really fun. It was a fun... Uh, even though Ant-Man wasn't, like, the greatest Marvel <laughs> movie, it was still fun. I like them both. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ant-Man and the Lost. Right? I like Ghost in it, even though they skipped the original Ghost. But anyway... Um, I'd rather, much rather talk about even the worst Marvel movie than the rest of like, this show anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, we could review Thor The Dark World, you know, or, uh, you know, we could go back and review Nick Fury from the 1980-something TV no, movie. No, 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 we're not going to do Nick, oh, uh, with David Hasselhoff? Yeah, with that, the Hoff. Uh, should we do, oh my God, should we do all of those horrible... The Captain America one oh, from 1991? Where he's in the latex, yeah. like this. <laughs> Looks like a, it's yeah. like it's like a dive suit. Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, 1991. His face looks like an ass crack, <laughs> a sideways ass crack, because it, and his his eyeballs are like and, bulging and the, out. The red skull like can't even move. He's yeah. like trying to talk, and you can see like the rubber bending. It's like <laughs> plaster of Paris on his face, yeah. just immobile. Uh. <laughs> and then, like he wasn't even like a red skull, wasn't he? Just like muscle. He was like no skin skull. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that was just generally what Red Skull has like. It's been like skin removed. It's been a mask. It's been all different kinds of things. So I can like let that go a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but that is it's like, El like Elrond's version of uh, yeah uh, Red Skull. Oh, they didn't. Who brought his name? Hugo Weaving. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the Matrix, and I couldn't remember yeah. Hugo Weaving, which just goes to show you like how people forget things. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you don't. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, I mean, he was everywhere for. I think he's doing like actual theater now. Yeah, probably. That's where they all go when they're like, good. <laughs> They'll come back when they need money. You know, <laughs> like when they redo the Hobbit or something. <laughs> I think uh, I don't know, but um, supposedly like, they they all make a ton of money off the Matrix. Oh, I'm them, sure. If, on the back end. Because it's it's never gone away. And, no. You know. No. Oh, uh, thank you. I mean, you know what? Should we have hopes for for all those cyberpunk fans out there? We've got Cyberpunk the video game coming up, yeah. which has Keanu Reeves in it, who was also in the movie Johnny Mnemonic, which mm -hmm. is another cyberpunk. Like he likes cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. That's why he's part of it. The Matrix, obviously, and now we have the Matrix Four coming out. Right. So uh, I don't know. I guess I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk the video game, and then Cyber and then Matrix Four next year, 2021. Yep. Um, and we're just talking Keanu Reeves and definitely waiting for uh, Bill and Ted. Yeah. Part three. <laughs> I don't know if we can... You know what? Is that, is that cyberpunk because they technically use a phone booth? <laughs> yeah. Even though they go to heaven and hell? Whatever. It's it's well, not it's not quite cyberpunk. It's uh, like cyber fantasy, uh, sci-fi, sci-fan. Okay. Yeah, because there's, there's a good balance. Is it technically portal fantasy? Is it technically the Portal Fantasy trope it's, because they're going into something? I don't know. Or is know. it the Doctor Who kind of I like TARDIS kind of trope? It's more sci-fi than fantasy to me. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I think it was Station. Once you have Station. Yeah, Station. Like, they can leave heaven, come back, and then... <laughs> and then the robots... Ah! <laughs> oh, God. And Death comes up. Death. Who's coming back for the movie for three, I think. <laughs> yeah! I, I hope he's still, like, a washed-up musician. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, then he become he was like the bass player. Yeah, or yeah. Something. Remember the, yeah, the yeah, end yeah. credits? Like he like went off on oh, his own. Oh god. <laughs> what or what? If, what if he's the only one out of the three like, of them that really anything. took off? No, that really took yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So people are literally worshiping death on a daily basis. <laughs> like not like worshiping. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, He's I, this huge celebrity. He's this huge <laughs> immortal celebrity in the Bill and Ted Three universe. <laughs> oh, so we're off topic completely, <laughs> but 
I don't know. Maybe Bone Ted Cyberpunk. Who knows? <laughs> But as far as Keanu Reeves is, you know, concerned, thank you for at least doing some cyberpunk stuff that, and throwing yeah. it out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a huge reveal at E3 this past year when uh, he came out and they showed the trailer and whatnot. Uh, Are the Wachowskis involved in Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the last thing I know, tried to watch from them was uh, Sense8 on Netflix. I watched that as well. What'd and you I, think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, just, it, it was something I put on while I was doing homework. Yeah, I don't even really remember anything about it. Like, you're a sensei. Like, and then that's, it was it. And you can pretty much have sex with your mind. <laughs> it was very... I mean, that's what the show turned very, into. Yeah. And, well, they did, did they do, um, did they do, um, Cloud Atlas? Was that them? I think it may have been. Because I hated that movie. <laughs> I hate that movie. And I don't, I don't say that often. Like, I'm not... Generally, something that's like, I hate that, you know. It's like Brussels sprouts and Cloud Atlas. And, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, it, no, uh, I yes. Just, I, it's, think, uh, I think it's we should wrap up. Lana and Lily, by the way. Lana and Lily, okay. Yeah, but I don't know which one is which. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Okay. You know, they live their lives. We'll live ours. They have a shit ton of money. Wish I wish we had <laughs> <laughs> How would that change me as a person? What, like just having boatloads of money? Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I've never had money. <laughs> I don't know what it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why, like, you talk about numbers with, like, budgets and stuff, especially, like, federal government. Like, it's it's not even actual money at that point. It's just a number. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just like, like, numbers they pull out of the tree. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's their... The debt clock, you ever watch that for a second? That'll make you feel good about your life, right? Oh, yeah, because <laughs> it's trillions and, trillions and yeah. trillions and trillions and trillions. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> uh, so comparing uh, comparing uh, season one to season two, watch season one. Yeah. Watch the first two episodes and the last two episodes of season yeah. two. It's like fast forward through the middle. Yeah, you can like, do that. If you do that with chipmunk voices, do it. Because <laughs> that's what's... Yeah. I, I mean, it's just... It's, it's disappointing because... You know, like we talked about, like, season one might not have the best ending, but I really want to watch every episode. And by the time that we got to the good parts in episode seven, I just didn't feel like watching it anymore. And was really just giving it a go because we're doing this. If it, yeah, once if, again, we're, once again, yeah. we are thoroughly disappointed with the current yeah. offering right. of just, a sci-fi. I think they bit off more they could, than they could chew. They waited too long, um, and they didn't really put the effort behind this product. And I think Netflix even realizes it wasn't as good as they wanted it to be because they did no, no marketing for it, you know? No There was no promo. There was no push. Didn't see it on TV. And this was like... Saw it a little bit on YouTube. This is one of their bigger things. It was. And I'm hoping that this, this, this problem with these streaming service shows isn't something that's going to continue because there's... Stuff that's coming out that like I'm really excited for, and one of them's like, a net Netflix has the rights to the Chronicles of Narnia now, and if you can't adapt Chronicles of Narnia well, like I don't know what you can. It's it's like, talk about a world that's like the same stuff that we have the movies for. <clears throat> yeah, but I don't. Or think... this past the other books, the other. I think other they're gonna books. do everything. How many movies were there of the Narnia movies? Was man? there four? I, I don't was, remember. It was Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah. Um, Is it Disney too? Now they are, yeah. Okay. Uh, or Disney might have sold them. I think Disney sold it. Okay. Um, because I, I don't think Disney would do anything with Netflix. Because at one point when I was in Disney World, there yeah, was a, a, a Narnia like yeah, right. thing that you went when, to. When Warner Brothers had Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. I think Disney went after Narnia. Uh, Narnia. Gotcha. Um, uh, yeah. So they did four, right? They did. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Dawn Treader, Prince Caspian, and one other, I think? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, Alter Carbon Season 2. It's a mission math for Mike. Uh, mission fail for me. At this point, if they do a Season 3, I don't know if I will watch it. Uh, and that's not what I want from something with the title, Alter Carbon. You know, um... To me, this is a big disappointment. And yeah, man, just, I, I just am so I'm I'm just 
defeated at this point. Yeah, I, like you look everything that comes out, I'm just like, oh, uh, I don't even want to get my hopes up anymore. I don't even want to get my hopes up anymore for anything. Yeah, you look forward to stuff, and then you start watching it, and it's just, is it? This isn't a nostalgia grab because it's it, it's only two years ago that season one was out, but it, it feels just like they're they just tagged it with the same name and tried to ride the coattails of the world without really giving us anything more. And, and it just really did not feel like the future anymore. It didn't feel like any type of like real science-y sci-fi. It, it just... There wasn't enough. No. And there wasn't enough. thin no. and very thin. There, and there very wasn't thin. enough like up upgrades. All right, guys. That was our season two wrap-up review. Yeah. Like that? Just like that. Thanks. Just like that. So thanks for like. Remember to like and subscribe. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna you never it. do that. You only do that when you're kidding and you think I'm going to cut it. And I'm not going to cut it today. I really don't care right now. Okay. Like, I just, Great. I want this done with at this point. Uh, like, oh, you know? I'm angry. <laughs> I want to go home and yell at my kids about Alton Carver. <laughs> How dare you be in some part of a sci-fi show? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alton Carver, I'm not just mad. I'm disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. We're Mission Accomplished Media. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. Uh, Leah, let us know what you thought if you watched it. Um, yeah. Like, you know, Mission Man, so it's still something to put on in the background. All right? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. See you guys later. Bye. Peace. See ya.